Hi, I'm Dr. Galena, the lead pastor here at Cutting Edge, and this is our official YouTube channel. It's a place where I pray that you will grow and fall in love with Christ and increase your connection and commitment with Him through covenant building. We have a saying around here that if you have a covenant with God, then you have a God of covenant, and He is obligated to do things with you, to you, through you, and for you. Cutting Edge is already a part of some major humanitarian and social activism projects. We feed daily over 80,000 children in Zimbabwe. We help parents with special needs children, and we also are a part of criminal justice reform because we want to see the redemption plan for man. Thank you for partnering with us in your giving. All of our giving information is at the bottom of this screen. We know that you're going to love what you hear here. So please like, share, comment, subscribe right here and turn on those bell notifications. We get pretty busy here at Cutting Edge. And so you may miss us, but right here, you can catch all of our replays. We here at Cutting Edge believe that the four walls of the church is not the only place to experience the love of God. We're here to go to the four corners of the earth, and we're going to show you that this is the way.
Good morning. Good morning and welcome everyone. Welcome Cutting Edge. It is 6 a.m. prayer on today, Wednesday. Yeah. 
Some of you guys consider to be hump day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am Pastor Gwinnetta. I'm the executive pastor here at Cutting Edge coming to join you guys this morning. Good morning, Patrina. And to everyone here on today as you're coming in, go ahead and give us all of your welcomes, your good mornings. It is official. It's the right thing to do. We want to welcome you guys here to our corporate prayer. Uh, we are Cutting Edge because this is the way. We praise and thank God for this time, this hour that we have on purpose set aside. We are intentional with our prayers because we understand the mighty acts of what prayer can do. And everything here at Cutting Edge is founded in prayer. And we wanted to take this time, and as we do each and every week, to take this corporate time of prayer. We're not praying alone. We actually come together to pray as a body. Whether you are listening to us live, good morning, but if you catch us on the replay, it's still the same power. It's still the same great anointing. It's still a God in the midst. And I want to um, thank you and just uh, actually just congratulate you for starting your day in this week way, um, continuing your day in this way. I want to let you guys know, for those of you guys who are joining us for the very first time, you are like, well, what are we praying for? And that's a good question to ask. What are we praying? When we come into God's presence, what is our target? We are part of the Arrow Network here at Cutting Edge, where we are taught and we are tutored under the um, um, the tutorship of our apostle and lead pastor, Dr. Galena White, um, that she teaches us to target our prayers. When we come into the presence of God, we come with intention. We come with a pure heart. We come in his presence and we're not coming to waste time or to take him for granted. And in this hour on today, we want to target our prayers, you guys, in the realms of power. If you have been joining us for the past few weeks within this latter month, you now know that we have been praying through and understanding, targeting our prayers in the realms of power. According to the Hebrew word of God, the Torah, that we read um, in the beginning in the um, Old Testament. We understand that there are realms of power. We're not just praying amiss. We're not taking our targets and just shooting them off, but we actually come in God's presence because we are joint heirs. We are heirs to the kingdom. We are his children. We are assessed to his power. And through walking through these realms of power, we understand, we know, and then we execute. Hallelujah on today. I want to welcome you guys and introduce to you um, a prayer that will sum up everything that we're going to pray on today. You're going to see in just a few moments, um, powerful, anointed um, intercessors here at Cutting Edge, where they're going to also not just pray with you, See, in prayer, it's not just about the, you know, the humming and the moaning, but actually it's language, it's conversation, it's strategy, it is execution, it's getting the plan right, it's understanding, it's involving wisdom drawn from God, drawn from this realm, and be able to know how to use it. And so when you stay with us here on today with our intercessors, you will hear in these power realms. Don't negate, don't neglect any of these power realms. Learn them, use them, obey them, walk in them. It is here for the asking. You've been asking, God, I need your strength. God, I need your power. God, I need the victory. We're here on today. He is giving you the answers to your plea. God will not leave us nor forsake us, nor will he see us righteously begging. We don't have to sit here, but we could sit here in his presence and soak up and glean from and get into, hallelujah, because we are his. Let me tell you guys about the power realm of prayer that we want to talk about on today. I'm going to give you in the pronunciation, It's we're going to be talking Hebrew on today, but this first one, we can put it up there. It is called Tatuma, okay? And Tatuma, it's like the power that flows like uh, a river from the holy place, okay? From the holy place. If you have um, learned or studied, you guys, in the Old Testament, the tabernacle that was a meeting place where covenant was given from God to his people. And even in that, there was set up um, a plan or an actual strategy of how the floor plan would be. And even past the commonplace of the outer courts, 
would be in the inner courts. Inside of the inner courts, there would be a holy place. This power that we're drawing from on today, which is thematically where we're drawing from all of our prayers on today with our intercessors, is Tuatsuma, okay? And from the word of God, we're going to be looking at Psalms 68 and 35. It says, O oh God, and this is David, a song of David, uh, but also written by David. It says, O oh God, thou art terrible. Now, when we see that word in this uh, dialect, terrible means great. Great, you guys, in strength, all right? And so it says, O oh God, thou art terrible. See, David found God to be great. Hallelujah. See, when we walk in these around um, these realms of power, we see our God not just omnipotent, not just um omnipresent, but we see him terrible. We see him great and powerful. Hallelujah. It says, out of thy holy places, the God of Israel is he that giveth strength unto his people. God is not stingy with his power. As a matter of fact, he stands here in the holy place waiting for us to draw into this place, literally to actually, you guys, get into the flow of the river. Now, I'm going to tell you this on the day. The direction of the river is not upstream. The flow of this river, you guys, in this power realm is downstream. You are able to download. It's coming from our heavenly father who is great and terrible. Hallelujah. He's all powerful. He has it all together and he is willful and willing to give unto his people. So all you have to do is to be his, hallelujah. And once you know you are his, you are heirs and joint heirs of the kingdom. You walk in this realm of power and you go forth and you're able to draw, hallelujah. Well, I want to let you guys know about that power realm because we're walking into it right now. Get into this place right now. Let me tell you right now, go ahead and grab something to write with, to jot these things down as we will go through this word. It is not just to speak, you know, you know, phrases and things that are, you know, written in the word of God, but it literally, you guys, is for us to open up our eyes, to open up our eyes of understanding according to the book of Ephesians, that we would even begin to portray what what we see, what we hear, and as we began to do. So I want to invite you guys into this hour of what? Power. Hallelujah. It's the Christmas season. We need power. We need power like never before, even to lend it to someone who feels powerless. That's evangelism. That's the call to action. That is what we are called to do. Once we fill up of God, we are to go, you guys, and to carry that power to someone else so that they too would see God. They too would know him and would understand, you guys, this Christmas season. It is all about our risen Savior who came in this place. He came in this place, not fitted for the end, but had to be born in a manger. But my God, do you guys know that was a powerful moment? That was a moment that we are dedicating in this hour. I want to bring you guys one of our first intercessors. They'll be all coming here. And I want you guys to get into this place. Let's get ready to pray. Let's get ready to go forth. Let's not be by ourselves, but we're in the assembly. We're in the congregation together. There's more and more power. Let's go ahead and let's start with our intercessor, intercessor Natasha. God bless you. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Cutting edge. My power realm this morning, we are praying. I am praying the power realm of Sir. That power realm. It means to be as a prince, to rule, contend, have power, prevail over, to make rulers. The realm of power where you are an example and standard for the principles of the kingdom of God. And so uh, just so that is the sir power realm. This power realm is going to be talking about this morning as I'm pulling up the scripture that goes with this uh this particular power realm, we are going to be talking about what it is to have the standard and praying through what it is to have the standard when we operate in the power to rule over. How are how are we ruling when God gives us the power to rule? 
Are we ruling with the standard of God, with the principles of God? Are we are we ruling in love? Are we ruling? Are we ruling um, in integrity, or are we being tyrants? Are we being mean? Are we being evil? Um, and so the first particular scripture that this uh, power round that we can read on, you want to go and read Judges chapter nine. You want to read the whole chapter. I'm not going to read that all this morning, but you want to read through it because it talks about the story of Embelic um, and how he was given power to rule. And, and, and in his power to rule, he began to kill people and and go to different cities in Shem and and to kill over to kill people to have his power. And so the particular verse that I, that we're gonna read it says, after Embelic had governed Israel for three years, so he was governing Israel for three years. Um, God stirred up animosity between Embelic and the citizens citizens of Shem so that they acted treacherously against Embelic. God did this in order that the crime against Jerubbabel's 70 sons, the shedding of their blood might be avenged on their brother Embelic and on the citizens of Shem who had helped him murder his brothers. In opposition to him, these citizens of Shem set men on the hilltops to ambush and rob everyone who passed by and that this was reported to Embelic. So I'm not gonna read, you wanna go through and read this whole entire story, but I do wanna jump down where it gives a little bit more context to what was going on here. Um, it said that, let's go down to the last, the last verse 56, it says, thus God repaid the wickedness that Embelic had done to his father by murdering his 70 brothers. God also made the people of Shem pay for all their wickedness. The curse of Jotham, son of Jerubbabel, came on them. So in, this, in that particular passage of scripture, we saw here where God had repaid Embelic because he had murdered his own brothers. He had turned against his own family. And so when we're when we're talking about the power realms and what God, God desired for, for his people to walk and power. God desires for us to have reign over the things that he gives us, but there is a standard. There is a principle that we need to live by. There is a way that we as Christians should operate and govern even when God gives us the power. And one more scripture before we get into prayer about this is Hosea chapter 12 and 4. And let's see what this is saying um, in Hosea. It says, Hosea chapter 12 and 4, again, go back and read the whole scripture to give full context of what we're bringing across. Also, make sure you tune into Bible study tonight um, as uh, we will be, um, there will be more teaching from our leaders concerning these power realms. But Hosea 12 and 4 says, he struggled with an angel and overcame him. He wept and begged for his favor. He found him at Bethel and talked with him there. Um, well, and, and then the, that's the NIV. But the New Living Translation said um, he he wrestled with the angel and won. He wept and pleaded for a blessing from him. There at Bethel, he met God face to face, and God spoke to him. And so, um, let's get into what else. So. The negative side when we reject when we reject for operating in the in the way that we should as the as a standard and principle of the kingdom of God when we have this sir power it says principalities have a foothold in your jurisdiction meaning the people places things and spirits under your responsibility so when we don't operate as we should as the, as sons and daughters of the kingdom and the right standards we bring we bring principalities on the people place and things that that we are supposed to bring light to right because we've been talking about how we're supposed to be a light wherever we are we're just talking about being effective and being efficient so when we don't operate as god uh, wants us to operate we bring on um we bring on hardship we could bring on death we could bring on calamity and so let's get into prayer and let's pray that as we as we continue to um, operate in the kingdom as we continue to do the things of God, that we will be the sons and daughters 
that operate in the light, that we shed love, that we bring about love. So let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you now, Father. God, we thank you, oh God, that you are a great and mighty God. God, that you sit so high, Father God, but you see all of your sons and daughters. God, there is none of us that you do not see. There is none of us that you do not know where we are, Father. So God, we thank you this morning. We thank you, oh God, for this time to be able to come and pray. We thank you this morning, Father God, that we can come to you, Father, and God, and ask you to have your way. We thank you, Father God, that we can come and ask you to have mercy on us, Father. God, we thank you for your grace this morning. We thank you, oh God, for the power, oh God, that you desire to give us, the, the powers, God, that we already have, Father. So God, in the name of Jesus, we ask you even more now, Father, God, that you will give us to be be humble, God, in the places and things that you have given us to govern. God, we ask you in the name of Jesus, God, that we will be the sons and daughter, God, that operate in the principles that bring you joy, that, that brings light to dark places, Father. We pray now in the name of Jesus, God, that you will continue to watch over us, Father. God, that you will continue to download, oh God, in our spirit, Father, in our hearts and minds, God, as we continue to seek your face. God, that you will continue to order our steps. God, that you will show us, God, in the name of Jesus, the way to go, the way to speak, how to speak in the name of Jesus. God, I pray now, God, in the name of Jesus, God, for those who are already ruling, for those who already have power over people, who have to lead people, who have to direct people, show people, teach people. We pray now in the name of Jesus, God, that a spirit of kindness, God, dwell within us, a spirit of love operate in us in the name of Jesus. I pray now, Father, even for those people who may be sitting under leaders, oh God, who are not treating them fairly, we pray now that the enemy be dismantled. We pray now, Father, that every hidden thing be exposed. We pray now, Father God, that you bring down God, in the name of Jesus, God, those principalities of darkness, those principalities that, oh God, keep your people, oh God, under Oh God, any and everything that's not like you, Father. God, that you will bring your people out to victory. God, that you will bring people out from under. God, being abused, being, oh God, mistreated in the name of Jesus. I pray now, Father, God, that you will increase us here this morning. God, that we will be the standard in the earth. God, that we will lead the way in the name of Jesus. God, we're standing in the gap and we're praying everywhere we go. Oh, Father, we are to stand in the gap and be that light to show the love that you desire for us to give in this world. God, that people may be better when we lead them in the name of Jesus. God, that people would be better when we leave them in the name of Jesus. God, that people will want to do better when we have spoken to them, when we have trained them, when we have walked with them. In the name of Jesus, we will be the light. So God, we thank you in the name of Jesus, God, that we will not abuse our power, God, but we will walk as you desire us to walk. We will lead and teach, oh God, as you would have us to. So God, we thank you for this prayer. We thank you for this time. We thank you, God, for all that you're going to continue to do and say this morning. And it's in the name of Jesus. I pray it is so, and so it is. I yield the floor. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And the declaration um, with intercessor uh, Natasha, we want to say this each and every time, you guys, as each of us as intercessors come and pray, we'll tell you the negative side of why not to negate this power realm. But then at the very end, after we pray uh, in prayer uh, to our Father God, we then declare. So you have the positiveness and you have the confidence to speak. So let us speak this declaration all together. It says, and I want you to say this or even write this down and say it and mean it. It says, I declare I am reconciled to the God of all power and I will submit mm, my strength and daily dealings to the Lord's standard for 
my life. Declare and decree it, my sister and my brother on today. Be blessed. Hallelujah. Let's continue on, everyone, with our next intercessor who's coming up. And this is an intercessor, Tiffany, who will be praying in the realm of Toke. God bless you all. Blessings, blessings to you this morning, cutting edge. And we bring you so much. Uh, uh, we Listen, I am overwhelmed this morning. Intercessor Natasha, she, she kicked it off. Uh, EP Glenetta. Boy, I tell you, this morning, power. We're activating the power. It is be unbelievable how... Um, just how important this is right now. Uh, I have been given the privilege of talking about Tokif, the authority, power, strength, and the energy of the realm that we live in. Powerful. This is a powerful um, authority and push in prayer. Uh, we know that uh, we need authority. We need power and we need strength how we wield them, the, how we use the tool. That is what Tokif is really about. The negative side effects of rejecting this realm of power is if you don't align with this realm of power, the people, the places, the things that are under your responsibility, including you, will experience oppression. Listen, mm. this is relevant to, to now. This is relevant today. This is um, one of the things that we are experiencing right now um, as we uh, go through different uh, changes in our environment, different changes in our political landscape, different changes in our community. We are experiencing right now the lack of Tokif, the lack of God being in authority. So that's what we're going to pray today. We're going to pray that God's Tokif, his authority, his power, his strength, all of those things rise up with us and help us move us into our next shift, especially since we're entering the end of this uh, Gregorian calendar year. We've got a couple of scripture this morning. Our scriptures are going to come from Esther 9 and 29. Uh, this is out of the, uh, the New Living Testament. And it says, So Queen Esther, daughter of Abihel, along with Mordecai the Jew, wrote a full wrote with full authority to confirm the second letter concerning Purim. This, this is about, this is speaking about Queen Esther and her authority as a leader. She uh, spent an, uh, uh, an exorbitant amount of time preparing for this moment, this one moment where she stood in leadership and she stood in authority and she stood in power. That is what saved the Jewish nation. That, that power is what we're talking about right now. Uh, then we're going to move to Esther 10 and 2. All and all his acts of power and might together with the full account of the greatness of Mordecai, whom the king had promoted, are not they not written in the book of annals of the kings of Media and Persia. All of the power, all of the might that came with what uh, was given by God to Mordecai and Esther. Those things have been recorded so that we can have a testimony of, of it, so that we can see the history um, and, and, and experience and know the evidence of God's power, his Tokif power. And then we have Daniel 11 and 17. And it says, he will determine to come with the might of his entire kingdom and will to make alliance with the king of the south. And he will give him a daughter in marriage in order to overthrow the kingdom. But his plan will not succeed or help him. The kingdom, the government. God gives his governmental authority and his power. That is what allows us to have dominion. So today we're going to pray about uh, and pray through this power, the power of Tokif. Uh, you know, um, it is it is uh, such a empowering thing to know that we have the keys to the car, but it's even more of an accelerator to know that we get to pick the car that we go in. And Tokif gives us the ability to go from a four cylinder to a six cylinder, from a six cylinder to an eight cylinder. And if you're good, you can get in a 12 and full and just zoom on forward. So today we're going to pray into the Tokif power. 
Father God, we know that we are helpless without you, that you are the creator and you know us and all of our inclinations, all of our proclivities, all of those things that are habitual to us. So God, we ask that today you, you, you consecrate us. You sanctify us, Father God, in our flesh and our blood that you created us from dust and you created us from destiny because we are destined to go back to dust. So God, we thank you for your creation, for your creative innovation that you've breathed into us, God, your prana that you, you breathed, inspired us. It is through your power and your authority that we've been given dominion and assignment over this earth, God. We thank you for that power. We thank you for that Tokis power, that authority, God, that you give us. God, we, we acknowledge you this morning. We acknowledge our weaknesses this morning, Father God. We acknowledge that through you, you are who gives us the ability to lead. You are who gives us the ability to guide. Father God, that we thank you. We know that we have to go out every day to risk our life, to earn our, 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 our wages. But God, you have given us everything we need. And we know that it is us that are weakened that we're like withering grass, that we're like a fading flower, that, that we are just like the clouds. But with you, you are our longevity. You are who keeps us, who, who protects us, who holds us. So Father God, we thank you today for that Tokif power. We thank you for that power that has been shown in our, our country, God, that covers our people, that covers us when we are in times of natural disaster, when we're in times of a pandemic, God, that power and that authority that, that you cover us with, that you that allow us to move so that we can care for others and allow others to not be oppressed that are that are under our leadership, Father God. It is with this power that we that we move, Father God. God, we ask that that you continue to help us recognize the trembling, your fear, the fear of you, God. We ask that your kingship be exalted in this place, God. You are king of kings and Lord of lords, that your thrill, that your throne will be firm, God, that you continue to be kind, God, to us as we, we sit upon your truth this morning, Father God, of your power, that you alone are who judges, that you alone are who proves, that you are alone who bears all of our burdens, God. And we bear witness to this, that you are the one who, who writes seals, that you, you count and you calculate in your power, God. And we will not forget that. So God, we know that you are the shepherd, that you guide us, God. That just like sheep, you pastor us. And we are led by your rod and your staff, God. So we know that you are the one that causes us to pass. You are the one that counts our, 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 our harvest, God. So we thank you for considering us, God. And God, we ask that, that in our destinies, that you allow us to, to see the fullness and the greatness of who you are, God. The authority to to give the orders that we need to give, the order to, to protect, the weight, God, the, uh, the ability to, so, to, to, pro to provide strong support to those that we should provide strong support, God, and God, to, to resist the, 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 the enemy, to resist those things that are not like you, God. Your word in Isaiah 40, 31 says that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Oh, yes, God that they shall mount upon wings as eagles and we shall run God and not be weary that we shall walk and
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We must have had some kind of technical difficulty, but what's okay? It's all right. She said, run and not get weary, walk and not. I want to finish that prayer uh, for intercessor uh, Tiffany because she began to talk about the uh, toke um, power realm. And so let's, let's finish that prayer. And so, God, we thank you that you have given us, oh God, these wings to soar. You have given us, Father God, a fire of energy to go through and to follow this course, oh God. We understand and know, Father God, that the power realms that we are walking through, we're not just seeking, but even so, Father God, as this flow of power is coming down to us. This power realm is seeking us, oh God, to revive us, to encourage us, to build up our faith, to build us up in the name of Jesus. And so we pray on today, Father God, that we will begin to download and to and to reach up and to draw down what you're given to us to execute, to not just plan and not just to vision, but even when the vision is set before us, as we study your word, as we are in tune with the Holy Spirit, that we walk these out, oh God, in power, oh God, in energy, in the anointing that you have called us. You've appointed us for these missions. You have appointed us for these testimonies, and we will not fall back, but we will move forward. We will not retreat, but only to retreat, to hear your word, to obey, and to follow. And we thank you on today for this glory, for this power, for this realm, that we are encouraged to move out in power and in strength that we will not only just walk in it, but once we even get to it, we will not become as strangers, but we will begin to live and to dwell in this, that this becomes a common place for us, not because the anointing and the power is common, but because we are now becoming more familiar to work in and to move in and to work out in the name of Jesus, because because God, you are great. You are mighty. The Bible, I'm sorry, not the Bible, but the song I hear says, you do miracles so great. As we serve you as a miraculous God, we too, God, want to even uh, receive, God, the power to work even through our hands, oh God, your creation, that miracles can be performed, Lord God, that things can begin to fall into place, that mountains can be removed moved out of the way, even by our tongues of speaking. And so we thank you for this. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. We thank you for intercessor Tiffany, for her willingness and her willfulness to go forth in prayer on today. Hallelujah. God bless you. This is our declaration, our second declaration. Write this down, write it on your heart and speak it with confidence. Speak it as you walk in this realm of, of prayer. It says, I declare the land is refreshed by my ability, I love this, to handle God's responsibilities and exchanges with integrity and diplomacy. Let's give God a praise for that declaration as we not just say it, we're not just you guys hearers of the word, but we have to do this word. We have to know that it's refreshed by our ability that we can. He would not put more on us than we could bear. So bear this responsibility. He's not stingy with it. He even allows us to handle his responsibilities. He is a great God. He's not just king by himself, but he's coming for his, his kings. I'm sorry, his, uh, his queens. He's coming for his kings. He's coming for his children because you are joint heir into this. So declare and decree. God bless you guys for that. And thank you, intercessor Tiffany, for that prayer on this morning. Hallelujah. We're going to continue on as we um, venture more into our realms of power, bringing up pillar um, Robert Cager at this time. And he's going to be praying. And I wish I could say these correctly, but correct me uh, later on, pillar Robert, of this power realm of select. All right. And I want you guys to continue writing, continue in prayer, stay in mind and in focus and hear the word of the Lord from Pillar Robert Cager. God bless you again. Hey, Cutting Edge. Good morning. How are you? I'm glad to be here. And yes, um, you pronounced it correctly. Um, it just depends on your accent and where you're from. It could be Salette or Shalette. Um, a lot of the S words um, have that sh sound. 
And so depending on where you are from, but that was it. That was awesome. Um, good to be here. Um, I'm excited about this realm of power. I have the realm called uh, Shalette. And this realm um, is the privilege um, of being first. It's the power of where you're selected to be first. And there is an election. There is a selection and an election of you uh, being first. And um, what I love about this is as a son, God has been teaching me that when you are first, um, not only are you a son, I'm going to do some alliteration really quick. Not only are you a son, but you are also a standard, all right? When you're selected to be first, you're a son. And therefore, in your sonship, you are a standard. Um, and we know sonship is not gender-based. Sonship is a position-based. It's a position-based word, um, which is why we're called sons of God. And so by being a son of God, um, you are therefore a standard. Um, you're supposed to be a standard. Um, of God, you're also supposed to be a sign, a signal, and a shift. Um, and so we have these S's. You are a sun. You are a standard. Um, you are a signal. You are a sign. You are a shift. Um, you are one that um, holds seasons. There are seasons in you. When you show up, you are representing a season that God wants to release. And so what's on your life as someone that is being selected to be first, you are a season. You are a um, you are one that when you walk into an atmosphere, when you walk into a region, when you walk into your job, the season or the atmosphere should shift according to the season that God has you in. Everything around you has to accommodate the season and the shift that you are in and that you are representing. Hallelujah. You are ambassadors and a represent and a representative of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And so when you show up, when you wake up, it's a new day dawning. Hallelujah. When you wake up, it's a new day dawning. Um, the last S word that I want to use, um, and I'm just saying this again, you are a sun, you are a standard, you are a sign, you are a signal, you are a shift, you're a holder of seasons. Um, and uh, in Christ Jesus, and then the last one I want to say and pray this revelation through is you are a steward. I want to say you are a steward in this realm of power because our scriptures are Daniel 2 and 48, um, Daniel 3 and 27. I also want to give you Luke 1, 30 through 33. Um, and then I want to give you Colossians um, 1 uh, verses 15 through 23. Um, I'll say those scriptures again. Hallelujah. Daniel 2 and 48, Daniel 3 and 27, Luke 1, 30 through 33, and then Colossians uh, 1, 15 through 23. And we're going to teach through these with this realm of power. Um, we're going to teach through these, through these realm of power tonight in Bible study, but I want to give you these scriptures now. Uh, we're going to pray through them. And as we're praying through them, the main point that I want to pray through is the Lord said to me, he said, son, by being a steward, he's been running this scripture through me, not just that the first shall be last and the last shall be first, but he spoke to me cutting edge. And he said to me, he said, Robert, when you are faithful over a few things, I make you ruler over many, right? He said, but just because you're ruler over many now, doesn't mean you stop being faithful over the few. Doesn't mean you stop being ruler over the few for what makes you ruler over the many is the fact that you've been ruler over the few. And by being selected to be first, you have a discernment and, and, a, and a hypersensitivity uh, to understanding of the responsibility of still managing the few because the few multiplied and brought you into the many. You don't get the many without the few. And when you have the many, there are still few to manage. You still have to manage the first work you still have to manage the responsibility on what it means to be first. And what it means to be first is in your selection, there are disciplines, there are routines, there are regimens, there are transformations and reformations of the mind, body, heart, soul, and spirit that God would bring you into, that God would shift you into and position you into that actually help you maintain the realm called first. Because the realm called first is the place where you don't have any templates. You are a trailblazer, but you have you you don't have a template, but you have a testimony. 
And so here is where the Lord, based off what he's doing in your life and based off what he has done in, in, the, in, the, in your ancestors, in your covering, you can look at their testimony and you can, uh, you, can, you, and you can trace. You may not be able to use it as a template, but you can trace the faithfulness of God. And I'm going to break that down more in Bible study. But I want to pray our father and our God. We love you for what you've just released and what you just said to us about what it means to be first, that we have an opportunity to trailblaze in your glory. We have an tr opportunity to trailblaze in your power, to trailblaze in your spirit, that we can look at the testimonies of the saint of the uh, the Bible says that we contend for the faith of the uh, of, that was once delivered unto the saints. We can look in Hebrews uh, chapter 11, the hall of fame of faith, and we can look at their testimony and we may not be able to use um what they've what they've done as a template for what you're trying to do next because it was done for that season and for that time and when we show up you're releasing a new season and a new way of of, of doing life of doing ministry of doing hallelujah excuse me that fell off my clip of doing life of doing ministry of doing church you're releasing a new way you're releasing a new wave and as a result of releasing a new way and releasing a new wave our father and our god we bless you that we have been selected here at cutting edge to be on the edge in the name of jesus and to be on the edge requires us to understand how we need to think how we need to live how we need to eat how we need to pray how we need to fast how we need to uh stay in our regimen and our routine as daniel did in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, the Christ, the son of the living God, as even Daniel began to uh, be selected as first. He was selected first, not because of his works, not, but he was selected first because of his diligence in the name of Jesus, of his dil discipline, of his covenant and his commitment to his covenant and his commitment to the lifestyle. Not because he was great, but because he was faithful, not because he was perfect, but he was committed to his process, committed to the covenant of God on his life. I thank you that even as you uh, brought me to Luke 1 where Mary was selected and she found fair favor with God to be the first woman to ever uh, hold a child of this magnitude to release someone and to release something that had never been released in the earth. The responsibility to carry uh, to carry a vision, to carry an assignment. Hallelujah. It's in the belly, y'all, to carry a mission, to carry a mandate, to carry an anointing, to carry an oil, to supply to the whole earth, to supply something that's never been supplied for before to release something that's never been released before to be assigned to be assigned to an assignment that's never been released before we decree and declare we have been assigned to assignments Woo! that has never been released before and we give your name glory honor and praise that we cannot look to anyone, but we can trace that you've been good for you are the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. And that's all the confirmation we need. We can trace that if you did it before, you can do it again. Hallelujah. That we don't need to look to people or compare to what other ministries, other churches, other businesses, other small businesses, other marriages, other, other uh, family structures. We don't have to compare or compete in the name of Jesus because what you're doing in us is a new thing. My God, you're doing a new thing that causes us to flow according to the spirit of the Lord. And so, Father, we release the spirit of the Lord on this morning. Hallelujah. We release the spirit of might. Hallelujah. We release the spirit of understanding, the spirit of fear, the spirit of knowledge, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of counsel and the fear of the Lord to reverence the fact that we are first and to thank you for the favor of the Lord. A negative side effect, Father in this realm of power is that when we are selected to be first, we can be haughty, but we're haughty because we're hard hearted. And we think that um, who we are and where we are now, that we can use who we are to judge where we're going and, and, and to make judgment out of the fact that you chose us to do something that's never been done before. But I'm, I'm reminded of Isaiah 11, and we would not judge by the hearing of our ears or the sight of our eyes, but we would move with righteousness and truth and discernment. We would move by the fear of the Lord. And so, Father, you're releasing the fear of the Lord on those that are first. You're releasing the fear of the Lord on those that are first, that we may not be haughty, that we would not be hard hearted, that we would not resist the will, the way and the work of the Lord. 
We bless your name, God, that when you call us to be first, you cause us to be first. You're bringing favor. And so right now I pray over cutting edge. I pray favor. I pray, God, that we would rest in your promises, that we would rest in the release that you have decided to make us first. We would rest in the release that if we're first, then you're going to fully finance, fully uh, 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 support spiritually and financially what it is that you've called us to be first in, that we don't have to carry the burden of supporting the assignment. We have to carry the burden of stewarding the assignment. I cancel now the striving. I cancel now in the name of Jesus, the labor, the unnecessary warfare and the unnecessary labor of your gatekeepers and your gap standers. Now in the name of Jesus, we cancel it. And we break it now by the power of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, the struggle. Hallelujah. There is no struggle. We're struggling because we're stubborn. So I pray, God, that you will make us malleable. Flexible. That we will not resist. When you want to shift, when you want to do something different than what we thought you were going to do, or how you were going to bring it about. Because the assignment is on the line, y'all. The assignment is on the line. And I'm telling you right now that as I begin to pray, God begin to allow me to sense a spirit of stubbornness and a spirit of pride attached to this realm of power that the enemy will bring on those of us that are called to be first because we think we know the way. But when you're first, you are following. You are not leading. To be, a, to be cutting edge does not mean to lead primarily, but to be cutting edge. And to be on the move of God, it means to follow. Hallelujah. And wherever you follow, God, we will go. And we thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, for a heart that is humble, a heart that is not resistant to your movement. But we are flexible. We are obedient. And we will recognize that uh, what we have in our hands is more than enough to accomplish what you want us to do in the land because you selected us to be first. And if these are the tools... Hear me, be encouraged, be encouraged, be encouraged. When God anoints you and when God selects you, if all you have is five smooth stones, if God selected you and all you had was five smooth stones at the point of selection, then the Lord wants to use those five smooth stones to get the job done. When you're first, God will use the uh, God will use the foolish things and confound the wise. He will use what you think he will not use to move you forward into your promise and into his promises. In Jesus name, I yield the floor. Hallelujah. I declare I have access. There we go. To divine help. Thank y'all. Thank you so much. And that's basically what I literally just said. I declare I have access to divine help and assistance in every season because I rely on the mercy of God. I rely on the mercy of God towards me. It is, it is his mercy that has selected me and I have divine help. So I can use anything that I have at the moment of my selection, at the moment of my appointing, at the moment of my anointing to be first. I can use what I have to get to where God wants me to go in the name of Jesus. Now I yield the floor. I love y'all. Thank you, Pillar Robert. <laughs> I know that's right. Um, I mean, listen, we rely on the mercy of God just to be first. Selected is the mercy of God. I love that he brought that point out. Um, and I, I want you guys to make sure you have that in your prayer, that this is not primarily just to lead, but my God, in this, we are to follow. Hallelujah. We want to continue on, everyone, with our next pillar. Pillar T is going to come. Um, and man, I just, I, I feel so honored to be saying them first, but Pillar T, go ahead and correct me again. But in 
in this next power realm, she's going to bring forth uh, with us, everybody, the power realm that's called um, Siltone. All right. Go ahead, Pillar T. Take us in. Hallelujah. Good morning, Cutting Edge. As our EP has said, I am Pillar T, and we are grateful to God for the push we have been receiving in these power realms. The realm of power I have been assigned is pronounced as Siltone or Shiltone. Uh, yes, Shiltone. And for your reference, it is Strong's number H for Hebrews 7983. That's H7983. Shiltone means potent power, power filled with life, power to give life, and creative power. If you go with me quickly to the scriptures in Ecclesiastes chapter 8, and we're going to look at verse two verses here. We're going to start with Ecclesiastes 8 and 4. And in the King James Version, it reads, where the word of a king is, there is power. Here is where you enter the world, Shaton. Where the word of the king is, there is Shaton. And we may say unto him, what doest thou? If you read this in the New Living Translation, it says this way in reference to the king. His command is backed by great power. No one can resist or question it. We must be mindful of the authority that rests in our mouths as kings and as priests. There is an authority and a power to create. If you go further down into the scripture, you will look at Ecclesiastes 8 and 8. And it reads, there is no man that hath power over the spirit to retain the spirit, neither hath the power in the day of death. There and there is no discharge in that war, neither shall wickedness deliver those that are given to it. Shaltone is potent power, power filled with life and the power to give life and creative power. So according to this verse, just as we can't control the wind, no one can control the day of death. It's actually warring against. In this war, there is no discharge of duties and even the wicked cannot cheat their way out of death. So listen, I don't know about you, but I want an honorable discharge at the close of day. I don't want to be found warring against the day of my death in which I have no control. My spirit will leave this body and for sure it's going to surrender to death. So why do we find ourselves warring against the ultimate authority of God? Who, Father, help me deliver me today. Listen, I got a good dose of Holy Ghost check and get right last week when apostle prayed through this power at the end of prayer. I don't want to war against and wrestle with the authority that's over me. I don't want to go, as she said, go unchecked because my own desires have caused me to be unstable. Why? Because I made a choice to clash against God. Listen, as kings, we must be careful to not operate in a power like this. Instead, of partnering with Kingdom Connections, we must take this power. We should not take this power and use it to manipulate and control the matter instead of walking in unity together so that we can create and create the thing that God is aligning us to create together, which is why the negative side effect of rejecting Shaton power instead of walking in creative and life-giving power, we begin to operate in manipulation, controlling our own path and rebelling against God. And what is rebellion? It, it is as unto witchcraft. So listen, I want to be stable in my dealings as I partner not only with the Holy Spirit to get stuff done, but as I operate and walk together in unity with my brothers and sisters in Christ and with the power to create from my mouth, with the power to create from my hands, with the power to create as a king, I want to create and give life. And that life Listen, I want them both to be checked and to be stable. Ask your neighbor, have you been checked by the stabilizer? Listen, Apostle, when she went over that thing last week, she really did take it to another level. So I encourage you to check that replay if you have not. All right. So our final verse, and I'm on my way out of here. I promise you, what better way to understand the power to create than to go to the beginning? Genesis 1 and 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. That creative power of Elohim lets us know that that it, it was through his power, uh, this creative power that not only created, but in the creating of heaven and earth, they were filled with life. He created and then he put life into creation. And we have been given dominion to operate in the earth as kings and priests through the covenant we have with the Almighty when we chose to make Jesus our choice. 
we are given access to the power to create. And for this reason, Father, I thank you that we will not operate as shaky and unsure creations filled with potent power, but we will allow the giver of life to blow a fresh wind that will not only uh, renew us, but that will lift us and move us swiftly into obedience. May we move with the wind of God that is pushing us forward and out of stagnation, not against the wind, but God, I pray in the name of Jesus that we begin to flow and operate in a cohesiveness that those you have sent with us to collaborate with in the kingdom, that we will move and operate in strength and power and not in dominating in selfless motives and intents, but we shall walk and create together as you have designed us to work as a body. God, we will not look back at what was and what could have been because we are struggling to let go of the assignment that was only there to teach us some things, there to cultivate us, but yet we're trying to hold on to it. Father, we were out of order and we, we're asking for your forgiveness now that we will shift and move into alignment for what you have aligned for us to do. We don't want to wrestle and we don't want to struggle against you. We don't want to be out of alignment, but we will receive that what you have given us in the power, in the spirit, and we will align in the Shaton power, God, in the name of Jesus. And we will press towards that which is ahead of us. The old thing is over and we choose. And and if we choose to stay, stay there, we are choosing death instead of creation. So God help us to close that door with no regrets. And from this moment forward, we will move as kings in the creative life given and potent Shaton power to synergize and push your agenda with those you have set that are a part of our eternal purpose. None of our own, God, not our will, but your will be done in our lives. No more of our own plans, God, but because you are all knowing and all powerful, we yield to you for your way is perfect. Let nothing walk out of our mouths Let nothing flow from our lips. Oh God, that is out of order, God, but we will align and we will partner with the Holy Spirit, God, and move towards the things that you have assigned for us. I pray for the strength to execute a yield and a surrender to you like never before. I thank you for that strength and I thank you for fresh ideas. I thank you for the blueprints. I thank you for removing stagnation. I thank you for building our faith and the push today to create life. I decree that we will no longer war and wrestle against you, oh great king. This war in our minds ends now and we take authority over the enemy that is within us that has has seeded and grown weeds of doubt about our call. But God, I thank you now that we covenant with you and our God and with the godly covenants that you have sent with us to partner with us in the kingdom. And we have an assurance that we are called and chosen for great and mighty works in the earth. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your charge. Thank you for your push and the press to walk as kings in creative power and in life. And with this mindset, we make this de declaration. I declare that the borders of my life are under the security of God. My kingship and priesthood is under the surveillance of God's mighty forces. I shall not be, mo oh, be moved. Glory to God. So make that declaration today. My God, I shall move forward and walk out the path God has laid before me. I shall not be moved, but I shall press. Come on, press yourself today. I shall press to the next in power to create in the trailblazing anointing that he has ordained us to do. And we shall soar in the next place in God as vessels fit for use and ready to be used by God. This is the Shaton power and we are filled with life and operate in creative power for it is so and so it is i yield the floor glory to god hallelujah we lift our hands hallelujah come on come on where is that force hallelujah it's in that power realm of chaton come on everybody it is there it is there not just for the asking my god but for the grasping hallelujah thank you pillar t for that thank you so much for that as you um you just completely orchestrated that magnificently and we thank god 
for this power realm and the realms of power that we've been praying together through in this hour. I'm going to end up, you guys, with our last power realm as we close out our prayer on today. Hallelujah. The power realm that I'm going to be praying in and, and want to release and, and see a testimony after it is the is the power realm called Sarah. It, it means to contend, to have power as a prince, which means, you guys, access to the king. You know that a king that has birth and, bo and bear a son, immediately he becomes the prince. And so in this Sarah um, power realm, you have power as a prince. You have all the accessibilities as your father. There is nothing held back or neglected or withheld from you. You contend with persistency. Come on, everybody. When you know that you are joint heirs and heirs to the kingdom, you have a persistence. You do have a certain aura that you're not guessing and hoping, but you walk in it and you know that at the end of your father's reigning, then that the kingdom would be accessibly handed over to you. It is to exert oneself, to persevere, to, to fight this good fight of faith, to go all the way through, to see your victory come and your victories come and your victories come. We proclaim and we process in our declaration through our tongues of speaking that this power be released to us in from the holy place, hallelujah, that God has given to us. He has begun to downpour into us. He's not holding. As a matter of fact, he stands at the door and he's waiting for us just to enter in. We studied and prayed in the glory realms, and now he's taking us further into the power realms. Now, let me encourage you on today. If you neglect this, my God, if you just deter from this, if you walk in fear, if you say you can't, if you say they didn't say I could do it, or you don't believe in the negative side of rejecting this, I'm telling you guys, it's not just as you are seeking this power realm that God is is seeking you to come into this power realm. He's not establishing it to be established, but he's established it for his children. You are a, a joint heir to this kingdom. You walk as a prince because you have the access and the responsibility just as a king. And so if you negate, if you deter, if you keep walking in doubt, if you keep saying, I can, instead of saying, I can, I shall, and I will, you will not be able to align yourself with this realm of power. You'll begin to have battle fatigue. Now, I'm going to tell you the scripture that we're going to talk about today, you guys, will begin to explain the seriousness and literally, you guys, what happens in our lives as we experience this fatigue. I'm talking about this battle fatigue. You know, when you're battling, you're fighting, but it's a tired fighting because guess what? Yeah, in your mind, you're saying, I'm tired of fighting, but see, your heart will follow if you get it aligned because if you're really sick and tired of being sick and tired, it would make you move. Hallelujah. So don't negate this Sarah power realm. Walk into it. Draw from God because you have access as a prince. That means you have the responsibilities ahead of you as king. Hallelujah. Because you you have not let go of this unnecessary warfare. Instead of you beginning to fight the good fight of faith, you begin to fight other things. You begin to mess and to meddle in things that God is not in. I believe it was Phil Robert, he said on today, he said that we should be faithful over a few, that he would make you ruler over many, but it does not negate that you should not forget that you should steward the faithful few. Don't forget about them. He didn't forget not one lamb. It says the shepherd went back after one sheep. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he did not consider just the 99. He said, I have to have all 100. And so he's considering even the one. Hallelujah. And so on today, we want to pray, you guys, in this, uh, not contention, but to contend, everybody. It's not contention. It's not strife, but to contend. It means to persevere, to go on. It's like, da it's like David when he went before, he took up that large, massive armor and he took what God gave him. The tools that God is giving you is enough. As a matter of fact, it's more than enough, Pillar Robert 
word said. And so you take these tools and you begin to persevere and you contend no matter who your contender is, no matter, and they said every uh, level there's another devil. It doesn't matter when we walk in this power realm. It doesn't matter what ranking, hallelujah, of enemy that we come against. When we walk in as prince, we stand a certain way. We're uniformed a certain way. We're recognized from afar. They know us even when we are a baby that we will one day have full access as king. So you got to walk in that power, people of God, as you're listening, as you're praying, as you're contemplating, and you're getting rid of those negative thinking thoughts that try to stop you, that try to hinder you, that try to leave contention on your heart. When God says, I've called you to contend, I've called you to fight this good fight of faith, it's going to be walked out in faith. Hallelujah. According to the scriptures, you guys, the scriptures that we're meditating on in this power realm is found in Genesis 32 and 8. Now read the entire scripture, but let me tell you in quick synopsis, Genesis 32, you guys, is the coming together of Israel or Jacob, all right, with his brother. If you don't know the story, very, very simple. In their past previous years, Jacob did his brother Esau wrong. They were twins. And so you guys understand that in 32 and 8, and I'll go ahead and I'll read it, but I want you guys to know the meat is in the entire chapter. As it speaks out in Genesis 32 and 8, it specifically says, and said, if Esau come to the one company and smite it, then the other company which is left shall escape. Listen here, everybody. This is our act of power. And see, Jacob is acting as, everyone listen, a prince. Now, where did he get this accessibility? If you go back to Genesis 28, come on, everybody. Do you remember the story? When he began to battle in fatigue, he was wrestling with the Lord of hosts. Hallelujah. He was awakened out of his sleep. And he began to see the, 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 the uh, cherubim of angels ascending and descending everybody it was an upstream as well as a downstream pouring down and see at that place hallelujah at that place he was set in a glory realm hallelujah come on everybody remember that story when he began to wrestle i told you, you cannot negate this power realm because even jacob began to be badly i'm making a word badly fatigued that he was fighting and he said what he says i won't let go until you bless my soul see that's when the power stepped in the power stepped in as he gained access in the glory of god yes it was a glory Remember, we, we, we talked about, we learned about the glories of God, the 21 glories of God. This is, you guys, uh, at this place in Genesis 28, this is the access glory realm, which we call El. Come on, everybody. At that place, at that time, when he was met with the Lord of hosts and God began to deliver him and set him in a place of power, it was Jacob who called that place no longer loose or the place of light, but he called it Bethel. Bethel simply means, you guys, that what? It is God. God is here. It is God, the place of God, the place of El. And so he now has access, you guys, in that glory realm that stepped him into chapter 32, power. Power to face the things of your past. Power to face the things you've done wrong. He still wants us to walk that straight and narrow. There is still even power in that. We can't walk around things, everybody. We can't sugarcoat. We can't say that we forgave them in our minds and in our hearts. No, we've got to go to them according to Genesis 32 and 8. We got to go to them face to face because you're walking in power on today. You're walking in the power realm of Sarah. Hallelujah you on today because it is not just for the asking but this today you guys in 2021 stepping into 22 it is now for the producing we produce in power hallelujah the last scripture you guys is found in hosea my god chapter 12 verse 8 let me go there with you 
Hosea chapter 12, verse 8, we know Hosea is a prophet and he is speaking, you guys, of the prophecy, the, the main theme of repentance. And as he's speaking this thing, everybody, I'm telling you, there's a power in repentance. Come on, everybody. If you walk that thing, if you begin to start remembering, come on, everybody, not what they said against you, but if you start remembering, hallelujah, your repentance, that you will not go back to that place. You will not allow people to take you back to that place. You will allow things to roll off of your back, you will begin to consider, hallelujah, what the Lord is saying, and you will go forth. And so Hosea says in chapter 12, verse 8, he says, let me get there. I'm sorry. It says, and Ephraim said, yet I become rich. I have found me out of substance in all of my labors. They shall find none iniquity in me that were sin. Come on, everybody. I'm telling you, there's a power in your repentance. And even prophet Hosea, he began to prophesy that to the people that needed it, the children of Israel, they needed it at that time. And he began to refer even back to the story of Jacob. Come on. He took us back to the place of Jacob again. Won't you go back to that place? Not that place caught loose, but that place is called the place of Bethel. It is the place of God, the place of Yeshua, the place of Jehovah, the place of El, hallelujah. And as you granted that access and you walk into it, you become powerful and you lose all fear. You lose all fatigue and you walk upright that you're able come on everybody to revisit your past to repent and forgive and move on and reconcile come on that's the power of god that's the power hallelujah of mediation that the holy spirit can bring so let us pray you guys in these last few moments in this power realm of sarah hallelujah and let us pray hallelujah and when we pray we pray as a prince would come on we're not in a begly element we are not peasants come on we are not vassals or lords but we are joint heir to our father for the purpose of having power in this time and day come on everybody so father god we just uplift our hands hallelujah we surrender and we adore you on today. Father God, you are king of kings. You are Lord of lords. You are majestic. You are Emmanuel. You are God with us. We celebrate you as our father, as no other. My God, on today, there is no one greater. And then you even sin, Father God, the great one. You sent your son on today as even as men and women of God. We're commemorating the holiday season, Father God, just to the fact that your son that you gave to us again, you keep down downloading and downpouring from the holy place uh, the tools that we need uh, we need nothing else but jesus on today we walk in power because we have the power of jesus hallelujah and things begin to recover and things begin to move out of our way uh, and things begin to align uh, and reconciliation is real this time hallelujah i'm able to go back to my brother and my sister who may have offended me or me who may have hurt me intentionally or not even thinking about it. This is the power of Sarah and we walk in it in the name of Jesus. And so I pray this prayer with my sisters and my brothers. We're nothing but more princes on this line on today that we have the access and we're not accessing it as a, a lottery dream or a wish, God but it has been destined, it has been prepared for us. Thank you, God. Our heart is grateful on today. Thank you for preparing, hallelujah, what you're sending down for us. You saw us working, you saw us with our mouths closed and our hearts open and our minds ready to be filled.
healed, hallelujah, not by the woes of the world, but by your wisdom in the word of God. Saturate us completely, Lord God, that while we stand here, we stand firm and founded. We stand here in these places of power to not just have testimony, but to overcome by the blood of the lamb and then the words that become our testimonies. We speak this word of truth. We speak the word of God, not for phonetic behaviors and expressions, my God, but to intimidate the enemy that tries to kill, steal, and destroy. We come against it right now, as Pillar Robert called out the stubbornness. We come against it right now in the name of Jesus to have a word so good and so valuable that we even become stubborn to, to even read and to seek and to study and to show thyselves approved. So God, break on today the, the mindset in stubbornness and give us a will to obey, a will to walk out, a will to follow and not just to lead. Hallelujah. We thank you on today, God, because you are great. You are great and terrible, which means you are mightier than I. You are mightier than all. And we reverence you on today, wherever place in our lives that we need to possess this Sarah power. My God, we are opening up to you. We are becoming vulnerable to you. You see those places where we have been in battle fatigue and got ourselves involved in meaningless warfare. We think that we are in spiritual warfare, but like Pillar T said, that's witchcraft that we're walking in and the devil has blinded our eyes. But on today, hallelujah, by the mercy of God, hallelujah, our plea today, God, is that you would have us in the right place, at the right time, in the right season, with the force of God and the energy of oh God to overcome, to walk it through. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for this prayer. We thank you for this hour. We thank you for every mind and every eyes and ears that will be able to experience this prayer as we join together, building the kingdom of God efficiently and efficiently effectively. Hallelujah. You can go ahead and bring up the declaration for this power realm and you can say this with me as well as write it down and don't forget to meditate on all the declarations. But it says, I declare I will experience the redemption of God's original design of my personhood. Come on. For this is where the power to fight and come on, everybody. I'm not going to fight unless I'm going to win. It is where the power to fight and win comes from because we're not picking up any small stones or, or or anything unless we what we win because we walk in the confidence and the power of god hallelujah hallelujah praise the lord well i thank you guys so much it has been a blessed time with you i know that you have uh, heard from god you didn't need to hear from us as intercessors we were just here you guys to be there to hold up the hands to make sure you kept the attention on god but i know that you heard something from god meditate on that word on today don't lose that word keep it with you all day today you are purpose to hear this for a reason now not just hear it everybody but do it do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. And watch the manifestation of God's glory. Watch that we can see the testimony of God working through you. And yes, you won't just save your lives. But I tell you this, you'll be saving many lives, many lives. Come on, come on, come on. You'll be saving many lives. Why don't you guys join us on tonight? Because this is just the beginning of today. But join us on tonight as we continue on in this study we have enjoyed Dr. Galena and Pillar Robert Cager in our Bible study as they have not just been helping us to pray and to say words, but to open up our mindset and to shift our mindsets to a way. We are cutting edge. This is the way. And so on tonight, back here on um, our social media on Facebook, you will go with us on live in our study, everybody. Furthermore, into the... Um, the understanding and the power and wealth that is in the power realms. You can't just get everything in one setting. I know many times I go back to something that God has given me over and over again, because guess what? 
there is nothing old. There's nothing old in God. I tell you, he can be of ancient of old, but nothing in God is old. Everything that I come to him, he always brings something brand new. So don't miss the opportunity to get something brand new on tonight in our Bible study. Um, it is 6.30 p.m. Uh, Center Standard Time. Join us for worship, uh, for a great time.